Every, every form has a hidden sound within itself. When I say a hidden sound, the surface sound of an object will come out when you strike it. If you strike a gong, the sound that you hear, the sound that many of you hate because it rings at 4.45 in the morning, that is the surface sound of that object. There will be a hidden sound to the object. If one knows the hidden sound of an object or a form rather, once you know the hidden sound of a certain form, you find you also know the form, you find a certain excess and a certain intimacy to that form. It is based on this that in this culture we name children like this, feeling the fundamental reverb of a child. Accordingly, a name was given so that by uttering the name, above all the child constantly hearing the name will not become a closed life, will become an open possibility because constantly every time his name is uttered, something touches him very deep down inside. Not just a way of calling a person, but a way of opening a person just by uttering the name. <clears throat> the naming of a child today has become the whim of the parents according to the fashion of the times. But till recently, the naming of a child was not in the hands of the parents. Always it was somebody else who knows little better, who decided what the child should be called. Because you are naming a person for social and practical reasons, but that's not all, because the existence is just a complex uh, amalgamation of reverberations. In this complex process of various types of vibrations, you also are one. If you just become just one more, you are like a grain of sand, nothing. In the vastness of this cosmic space, this little body is nothing. But if this hidden sound finds expression, then this is like a key to everything. This not only opens me but it also opens the other, whatever I touch with this sound because this is my sacred key. So, every child, when he is born, the parents were given the freedom to give them some pet name 
for their emotional satisfaction, but his real name was given by somebody else who is supposed to know better than the parents, not always but that's due to lack of education, that's due to discontinuance of culture. That is due to inefficient transmission from generation to generation. Otherwise, this is done by someone who knows what is the fundamental reverberation of this little child. So they wait for a certain period of time, they observe the child, they make other astrological calculations and arrive that this is the hidden sand of this child and that is what we should bring out because it is only in blossoming that, it is only in allowing that to flower and find expression, this child will find full expression to his life. Otherwise, a seed that never sprouted, on the surface many things happened, that's not it. <clears throat> and this is how even the deities are named. The other day someone told me, so, uh, you know, I sent word for them and they were not available anywhere. I said, where were you? Uh, this person said, uh, Sadhguru, I was at uh, DLT. I said, what? DLT? Where were you? No, I was at Dhyanalinga temple. Oh, DLT. <laughs> so you go to DLT, <laughs> it's one thing. I am your… I was in Dhyanalinga, that's a different thing. The deities are named like this. If you utter the sound Bhairavi, tears should come to you. If you say Dhyana Linga, stillness should come to you. If you say Sadhguru, a wave of ecstasy should pass through you. If you utter the sound with the necessary involvement because sounds are not just nonsensical garbage, sound is reverberation. If the reverberation is right, it gives you the needed access. So when the music is on, I want you to listen to the sound, not to the music. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to listen to the sound, sound of it, not the music of it. If you want to have the pleasure of music, you can listen to music. If you want to find deeper access to life, you must listen to the reverberations, not to the lilt. Lilt is surface, lilt is a small thing, beautiful, but that's it. The reverberations are the very making of life. How this one reverberates right now, it's, it'll determine everything about this one. <clears throat> if this reverberates right, it will not only determine the nature of this one's life, it will determine the nature of everything's life. It will not only determine the nature of the individual, it will also determine how everything else happens around that being. So when the music is on, in the darshan, I want you to behold the sound, not the music. Sound and form are intrinsically linked in various ways. The theosophist concept suggests that there is a connection between sound and color, where each form has a corresponding sound attached to it. Sound design is an integral part of product design as the sound a product mix is closely tied to its form and function. The sound of language is closely connected to its written form as the words of a language combined in both writing and speech to create a specific sound. 
Sound can be seen as a form of connection bridging the gap between human and non-human, body and soul or natural and artificial. Sound and form are interrelated as sound can be considered a form of connection between various elements. The concept of sound shapes suggests that direct relationship between the manipulation of sound objects and the resulting form or shape. The connection between sound production and the physical structure or form of a system such as supersonic jet is an era of active research. The neural processing of sound is closely tied to the formation of perpetual representation, highlighting the fundamental connection between sound and form. The use of discourse analyze as the methodological orientation can help construct science as sociocultural practices through oral and written discourse. Sound design in science fiction films can be used to create a unique aesthetics and immersive experiences. Constructivism as a sound theory can be used to explicate the practice of science and science teaching. The nature and physics of sound as well as the distinction between sound as a perpetual and physical phenomena can be used to understand the science of sound. The study of basic and applied physics within the physics community and the hierarchy that places basic research above applied research can be used to understand the age of electroacoustics and the transformation of science and sound. The power of sound can be used purposefully to enhance our life with various applications in health and productivity. The use of prosody to describe the technical aspect of sound and form in modern poetry can provide insight into the relationship between sound and form. The use of sound as a large umbrella that encompasses all sound possibilities can be applied in qualitative research to explore vibrational effect. In this insightful video, Sadhguru delves into the profound connection between sound and form within existence. Just as a bell produces a sound when struck, every form in the universe carries its own unique resonance. Sadhguru enlightened us on this ancient science, shedding light on how understanding this interplay can contribute to our overall well-being. As we conclude this journey of exploration, let us reflect on the wisdom shared by Sadhguru. The harmonious relationship between sound and forms invite us to embrace the beauty and complexities of life. May we carry this knowledge with us as we navigate our life, finding peace and serenity in the symphony of the universe. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey into the nature of sound and form within existence. Sadhguru has shared profound wisdom about the intricate relationship between sound and the diverse form that surround us. As we have also learned, just as a bell resonates with, with a unique sound when struck, every form in the existence carries its own inherent sound. Understanding these ancient signs opens up a world of possibilities for our well-being and growth. By unlocking the secrets of the cosmic melody, we can tap into the immense power of sound and its impact on our life. Sadhguru's insights have shed light on how we can align ourselves with the harmonious rhythm of the universe and experience a profound sense of balance and peace. Remember, this knowledge is not confined to this video alone. Our channel is a gateway to a wealth of wisdom and teachings from Sadhguru. So we invite you to explore more of his enlightening discourses, guided meditation and transformative experiences. Take this newfound understanding of the cosmic melody within you and let it resonate in your daily life.
by integrating this insight we can find harmony within ourselves and our surroundings thank you for being a part of our community and we look forward to embarking on further journeys of self discovery and inner exploration together remember this is not a summary of sadguru's word it is simply my interpretation of the deep wisdom he imparted please keep this two separated and do not misunderstand until next time may the cosmic melody guide you towards clarity peace and fulfillment namaskaram